Welcome to As I Live and Grieve, a podcast that tells the truth about how hard this is. We're glad you joined us today. We know how hard it is to lose someone you love and how well-intentioned friends and family try so hard to comfort us. We created this podcast to provide you with comfort, knowledge, and support. We are grief advocates, not professionals, not licensed therapists. We are you. Hi, everyone, and thanks for coming back and joining us again. Here we are, still living, still grieving. You know, y'all know that we say, because I feel personally, I'm going to grieve for the rest of my life. And that's just one of the truths we seem to have found. Our guest today really, really makes me happy because she's a writer and her words are amazing. So I want to introduce you to Chelsea O'Miller. And I'm going to ask her to give a little bit of her background and a little bit of her story. Yes. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening. And thank you so much to Kathy and Stephanie for having me on today. I really appreciate it. I am just like she said, Chelsea Olamiller. I am um, the owner of the website Happiness, Hope and Harsh Realities. And I also have um, social media uh, under those names as well, Happiness, Hope and Harsh Realities. And basically, I am now a grief writer, (laughs) something I never really intended to be. I consider myself a grief inspirer, grief encourager. And that's all because sadly, I lost my mother in 2017 to cancer. She was only 57. And um, it really just changed everything about my life and my future and my path and my goals. And it really changed everything. And so I really had to find a new way. And so I just started writing. I'd always been a writer. I'm an educator at heart. So I was actually a teacher at the time. And I really just started writing down, you know, what was going on. And none of my friends, I think I say it all the time, but, you know, my mom was 57. I was in my early 30s and none of my friends had even lost their grandparents. And so nobody knew what to do with me. You know, here I was, this girl whose mother had died and I wasn't the same. I didn't like to be, you know, around people anymore. And I I didn't know what to do. And so I really just took writing as an outlet. I started my page mostly as therapy for myself. And I never, ever thought that it would be the beautiful community and space that it is today. I think today I have over 48,000 followers on Facebook. And it really is just this page that has, you know, welcomed grief and exactly what you guys are doing. It's just this safe space where someone can read my words, which pour out of my heart and say, yes, me too. Or you know, someone will say, I didn't know what I was feeling, but I I read your work and I shared it with my husband. And I said, this is exactly how I'm feeling today. And so somehow, you know, I took grief and I gave it a new purpose and became a writer. And so that's what I'm doing now with my website and my social media pages and just everything. So many things that you just spoke of ring so true. The first probably was the fact that you had all these friends that didn't know what to do with you. Right. Yep. For me, the most recent loss has been my husband. And even though I've had other losses and people my age, friends my age, they've had losses in their lives, they still didn't know what to do with me. Yes. If you know someone who has lost someone through a death, everybody feels so awkward. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's like I was walking around with this label, you know, like those labels that they give little kindergartners that say, hi, yes. my name is Chelsea. And I felt like I, it was on my forehead and it just said, yes. her mom has died. She, yes. you know, she is motherless, which right. I hated. People referred to me as that. And I said, no, I'm I not. And I just felt like nobody saw me anymore. I, right. I didn't even see me, you know, but I right. thought, what has happened, you know? And yeah, you just, nobody recognizes you. You don't recognize yourself. You don't know how to go on and you think I'm different. And so first I had to figure out, you know, how to be different and what my Mm -hmm. new life was going to look like. Yeah. Because it clearly was not going to involve my mother, which I did not see happening for a very, very long time. Sure. And then the second piece to that was I was terrified. I thought, what if these people don't come along for this version of me? Right. I've already lost my mom. Am I going to lose other people too? Because exactly. I'm different and this is not who they became friends with or right. were married to or, yeah. you know, all these other things. And so a lot of times people don't realize that grief is just, 
it's terrifying because you lose people, you lose yourself or at least a little bit of yourself. And then you're forced to figure out what's the future look like? Mm -hmm. Who does it include? Exactly. I think you lose more than a little of yourself. I know I felt like I had to redefine my life. Yes. I just, I, you know, I was not the same person, just like you said. And for me, it was eight months of caring for my husband, taking two appointments and everything because he was no longer able to drive and all of that. So gradually, piece by piece, minute by minute, my routine, the life that I knew, my lifestyle just was given up mm-hmm. until I did everything for him. And then when he was gone, all of a sudden, I, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. And it, yes. it's a period of discovery again. So you found that writing, helped you and was therapeutic as well, right? It did. Yeah. For me, it was a safe place where at first I wasn't sharing it with anybody, you know, it was just for me. And it was a place where I could just write to my mom and, Mm -hmm. and ask her questions or, you know, write to God and beg Mm -hmm. him to answer my questions and to make this all make sense or to write to myself and just say, it's okay. You know, like, it's okay if people don't understand you right now. You you don't want them to understand you because right. that means they know immense pain too. And right. so, you know, writing just became this thing for me where I could let it all out. And sometimes it was hopeful, but a lot of times it was messy and brutal and it just felt okay. Like, right. you know, okay. And it right. was just a really therapeutic experience for me that somehow beautifully morphed into something that could help other people. And that's what keeps me going now is just knowing that if I can put my heart onto a piece of paper or a computer screen and somebody else can be helped, even one person, then my pain is is worthwhile for something. Mm -hmm. Right. And just to give our listeners an example, a very brief example of the words that they will find if they read your blogs or follow you. Here's one that I picked this from your website. It says, you have three choices with grief. Repress it, suppress it, or express it. Choose carefully. Only one is successful. Mm, I feel like that should be on a a t-shirt. A (laughs) t-shirt. And here is my other t-shirt quote. Grief is a journey not a place. Keep stepping, keep going, keep growing. Those are t-shirt mm. quotes. Yeah. Oh, and, so you're and, telling me I need my own merch. Yeah. <laughs> you need your own merch, either that, or I'm going to have Stephanie whip one up and it's going to stay at the bottom. <laughs> it's going to have your name right on it, right on it. Yeah. Um, but those are things, and, and we have joked on our podcast before about if we only knew people who were grieving a loss, maybe some of us could just be a little extra kind Mm -hmm. and just approach them and let them know that we empathize with them and that they do have support. So we would say, you know, there are no t-shirts that you can wear that says, be kind to me, I'm grieving. It's not like you walk into Walmart and see, but wouldn't it be nice if there was some way to tell? However, in today's climate with the pandemic, Mm -hmm. We've also decided that everybody is grieving something or something. Absolutely. Everything. Yeah. 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 We just need to go on that assumption. I think. Absolutely. And and then, and still just the be kind to everyone. We should just be doing that period. Absolutely. 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 Now we've had guests on our podcast and we've talked about writing, journaling, for example, as a way to help some people that are grieving, maybe get some thoughts out of their mind onto paper and maybe help them move forward a little bit, or at the very least, release some of those emotions. So, and I know for you, it's therapeutic, but I know our listeners are going to say, yeah, but she said she was a writer because usually the first thing that someone, and it's likely Stephanie will say, I'm not a writer. I can't (laughs) write. Do you have any, any suggestions for people who really could benefit, I think, from trying to put some words on paper? Yes. First, um, you don't have to be a writer. Um, Number one, I'm sharing it with the world, but you don't have to. And I'm so glad you asked this question because um, actually uh, one of my grief sisters, I should call her, um, she just released a brand new um, grief journal 
which is called, I think, um, I'll have to look it up, but it's like letters to heaven or, you know, letters to my mother. And her name is Christy Lynn. And she has a Facebook page too. And she just released a beautiful, beautiful journal. And it's just for exactly what you're describing is that, you know, these, you're not going to be writing to, you know, publish in the New York Times. That's not the goal. The goal is just to take everything you're feeling that you don't feel comfortable saying to your friends or your spouse or your significant other or your sister. Because even if you know people that are grieving, you are all grieving differently. Mm -hmm. Even if you're grieving the same person, you know, my sister and I both were grieving our mother, but we were both grieving a different relationship with our mother. Mm -hmm. And it looked insanely different. And so this is, you know, journaling and writing is just a way it's just another art and craft to get your heart out and to release those emotions. And some people paint and some people, you know, sing. But really, I think a lot of grief therapists and counselors will tell you the value of journaling and just even, you know, jotting down thoughts Mm -hmm. or memories, Um, you know, just so that you can go back and look, you know, one day, if you remember something funny that you did with your mother or your spouse, write it down so you can go back and look at it. And, you know, just little things like that. You do not have to be a writer to write. That is, you know, I, I tell people that all the time. I wish more people would write because it's something that you can go about. You can go back and look at, you know, your thoughts are fleeting. You are not going to remember what you thought on February 3rd or February 4th last year. If I think back on that day, I have no idea what I was thinking. But if I wrote it in a journal, I could go back and go, oh, look at how much growth I have done this last year. I was on my knees crying that year in the bathroom because I didn't think anybody understood me. And now look at me. I've, I just had dinner with my three closest friends and they get me, you know? And so it's just a beautiful way to really, it's for you, you know, it's self-care, right? Right. Write your thoughts down, write your emotions down and take the pressure and the weight off of thinking that it has to be anything because all it has to be is for you and truth. That's it. Yep. That's a really, Stephanie, that's, I know, (laughs) that's a really good point though. I like the, the looking back a year or two years and kind of see how you've progressed. I really like that idea. It reminds me of the, on Facebook, how you see the memories from, you know, seven Mm -hmm. years ago, you know, and you like, you see your kids or whatever, and you see, oh, in those memories, but seeing your writing too. And see how yeah, much it's your grow. memories, like time hop, yeah. the app, you know, and memories <laughs> on Facebook. Journaling was the original yeah, time hop like and memories. That. Yeah. Did you find writing on paper more therapeutic than like on the computer or is it kind of the same yeah. for you? For me, I will say when I first started um, and I was just doing it for myself, mm-hmm. I wrote a lot on paper, just gibberish. You know, I had just a little spiral notebook. Um, and I wrote the year on it (laughs) and, um, I would write the date every time I wrote. Um, yeah. And it was just for paper, but I'm also a teacher at heart. So I like doodling. I like other colors. I like to touch something. And so for me, that's what worked best. Now I'm almost all on, you know, Google docs and things like that. Notes on my phone. I use all the time. I think now we're just in such a digital world that we have digital access computers, things all the time, but I really think there's something about if you're journaling for yourself, that pen and paper to really, you know, put it by your bedside. There's always five minutes out of the day or, you know, have it be something really compact and little that you can stick in your, um, you know, your wallet or your um, purse Mm -hmm. and just have it there. And it doesn't have the biggest thing I always tell people if they're thinking about writing or journaling, it does not have to be pages and pages. It could be one sentence every day or one sentence every other day. It doesn't need to be anything big. Just how are you feeling today? What are you thinking? What's a memory? Anything, you know, it doesn't have to be this big task. It should just, if it's not helpful, move along and find something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We discovered with one of our guests recently that uh, when you talk about the expressive arts, like writing, drawing, like you mentioned before, that there's actually a branch of psychology called imaginal psychology. Had you ever heard of this? No, this I would was love like to a hear new more. discovery for me. <laughs> yeah, I've never heard um, of this. Yeah, and it's the whole idea of using the expressive arts, the drawing, the writing, the you know, the whatever. So it's it's actually there there's something to all that, obviously, if they've turned it into an actual package therapy form yeah. uh with all the different modalities. 
So I found that really interesting. One of the things I found on your website that I'm going to have to dig into a little deeper, music has always been very important in my life. And and you're smiling. Our listeners can't see that, but you're smiling because <laughs> you know exactly where I'm going with this. Yes. That you have actually compiled two playlists, if you will, and have the, the, the recordings embedded right on your website yes. for music that will help you as you grieve. Yes. And I listened to a couple of them and I was awestruck at the beauty of the lyrics in these songs, as well as the music, the melodies themselves and the recordings. How did you find all of these songs for people, artists I've never heard of? Yeah. Most of them. Well, I grew up in a really big music house. My dad loves even to this day. I mean, he is a huge music person. There was always music playing. And so music, I feel like just speaks to my soul. So it's kind of like writing, you know, I just love listening to music. And so when I first started grieving, even before I was writing, I was listening to songs mm -hmm. and tears would just, it was just tears would come and I would just be like, this is beautiful. This person gets it, you know? And so through the years, I just kind of made note of mm -hmm. those songs. And after I made my website, I thought, if music helps me, surely mm -hmm. it's helping somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I made my first, I think in 2020, I made my first um, playlist. And I just said, right. hey, if you're grieving, here's seven or 10 songs that will help you or have yeah. helped me. And then I made it really easy. If you pull up my link, you can click on the YouTube mm -hmm. video right there. And so I got so many comments and I'll emails bet. from people that said, thank you. I've never heard of this. You should listen to this one. Mm. And so then I would add it to my list. And then somebody else would say, oh my gosh, I've never heard of those two songs. I love them. Have you heard of this song? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so it just became, you know, every month I would get a couple who had come back to the website, found that post and gave me recommendations. And mm -hmm. so I, I think a couple months ago, it reposted on my Facebook page. And I got like 50 comments from people with <laughs> suggestions. They said, you yeah. should do another one, add these. Hmm. And so I just kind of went through and found another 10 that really spoke to my heart that I loved. And I made a new playlist actually today and just, you know, on the recommendations that people had sent. And I found myself through the last couple of months still going back to those 10. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just thought it was another way, you know, like you said, not everybody writes, not everybody does this, but yeah. I just want to give people another avenue to release their emotions and just feel like they're represented in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I think now with the pandemic and with life, we're getting more shows that deal with grief. Like this is right. us, mm -hmm. you know, and after like life, if you watched yes, after life, Afterlife, I just started it. Yeah. Yes. And it's perfect because it is. finally we're showing people the raw, authentic right. life right. of yeah. grieving individuals. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You see, you're yeah, that reference in so many shows now about grief and what people yes. are going through. And mm -hmm. yeah, every time I see another show, I'm just like, huh, how about that? <laughs> Yes. Yes. You're like, I've yeah, been living right. this for four right. years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. I was watching Afterlife and there was a particular episode where he, I mean, he was just really angry and rude and everything. And I thought, you know, people think he's nuts, but he's not. He's grieving. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, and how many of us have been there? Right. You know, exactly. I, I, I can tell you a time, you know, I was rude to a lady at the bank once when I was trying to close my mom's things. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I, by the end, I cried and I told her, oh, my God, I'm sorry. This is not you. But that's part of grief that nobody well, sure. talks about, sure. you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, well, anyway, thank you for the playlist because I'm going to have to go back and really. Now you have two editions, right? Yes. Yep. Right. So, so the first one not was in 2020. It, it took yeah. me a couple of years to get another one. But yeah, <laughs> I just released the second okay. one today. All right. And I try to have a range of, you know, artists and. Um, you know, some are faith based, some are not. Um, right. But yeah, it was all recommendations from people that are grieving just like me that yeah. said, hey, listen, that to was this. great. You know, and I don't think that's something you can find. I know for all of the books and all of the websites I've been through and all of the guests we've had and everything, it's the first time I've seen yeah. a playlist, the songs of grief. Yeah. So maybe you can do something to market that a bit more. <laughs> just, just <saying. laughs> I need yeah, to hire you yeah, ladies. Yeah. You guys are going to make me shirts. You're going to, you know. <laughs> We got a whole thing going here. Yeah. If somebody had told me decades ago, don't worry about what you want to be for the rest of your life. Focus on networking. Network your brains out because that's what's going to help you through the rest of your life. Yeah. And it's so true. 
you know, and so many times now somebody will say, you know, boy, I wish, oh, my back hurts and everything. Uh, need a good massage? I got just the person mm-hmm. for you. Medical yes. massage therapist. But it, it's networking, networking. Yeah, I turn to it all the time now. Yeah. So that if there happens to be any youngsters out there, I mean, like high school age or moms of high school age kids, tell them, drill into their heads, network, network, yep. network. Yes. Yeah. Well, absolutely. it's like, you know, it's also through networking, you know, with fellow grief writers or podcast creators and all of those things, you know, you also find your your niche and also your people. Like, you know, my friends are amazing and those are my people for the real world yep. and yep. things like that. But people like you and all of my, um, you know, fellow writing sisters and yeah. all of them, you know, those are people that I connected with and I'm networking exactly. constantly. Yeah. And I love that because their message is so important. And that's yes. how I met people like you, yeah. you know? Exactly. And y'all get me, <laughs> you know, yes. everybody... You know, we, we tell them what we want to do with our podcast. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you need to do that. You yeah. know, so, yeah, things yeah. like that are, are absolutely amazing. So well, I was going to correct myself because that, um, so it's Letters to Heaven. Okay. And it's by my friend Christy Lynn. And it is available on um, Amazon. And it is a journal that you can use. And so not sponsored at all. She's just a friend and she writes. And I would love, you know, if someone's like, I really want a journal, they could support her. Let her know she may be receiving an yes. invitation to be a guest. I'm going to have on the show. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Because I, you know, I have a, a mental note now. So you can let her know that she probably will hear from us. Yep. So, yes, I will. So Chelsea, with all of the primarily you're writing blogs, right, I think? Yes. Okay. I write. I mean, my website is pretty, I get, I call it a blog, I guess. Um, but yeah, primarily that's what I'm doing. I also write for Her View From Home, which is a right. wonderful, wonderful community. If you yeah. don't follow them, you should. And um, I've written for some other publications before, but mostly it's my website. Right. And then I go branch off from there. So have you ever thought about putting some of your blogs into a book? Yes, I, that is on my vision board and it's, um, it's honestly my biggest dream and you guys can't see, but I, I'm getting teary. I just thinking about it, but this year um, on my vision board, I have that I want to publish a book and I want to dedicate it to my mom. And so that's something that I'm working hard and I'm trying to have those doors open. So anybody that's listening, if you know an agent or a publisher, send them my way. Um, well, those, yeah, you know, those are hard to find. But, I know. you know, I mean, I, I did publish a book, but I did. I didn't do self-publishing, but I did print on demand. OK. And yep. it worked for me because I was able to sell my books and market my books. I got a lot of rejection letters from agents. Yeah. And I got a lot of really nice rejection letters from agents. <laughs> yeah. One even said that I wrote reminiscent of the style of Ernest Hemingway. That's my proudest one. Wow. But it, they didn't want to publish it. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but Hemingway isn't good enough for us. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, you know, it didn't matter because my goals were simple. I wanted to go into a bookstore and see my book on the shelf. I wanted to be able to go into a library and see my book on my shelf, on a shelf. And I wanted to have somebody I did not know come up to me and say, I read your book and loved it. Yeah. And I achieved all three of those goals. Mm-hmm. Aww, so I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. But yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think, uh, well, you have a way with words. Uh, you're yeah. a great wordsmith. And I, I think a book with a lot of those collected would be wonderful. I really will. So keep us, keep us surprised of your progress. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we'll certainly have you back when you publish. And we'll Yay. Have you your book, your book. Yeah, I would love that. Chelsea, what would you say to someone who, to someone like me who keeps saying, well, I actually have the spiral notebook, so that's one step closer? Because I've always said, I'm going to start just writing or journaling. And what would you say to someone like me to get me started, to get me going? writing down. Yeah. And and I don't know that mine, mine would be, I can't concentrate my journal on one thing. I don't know if that's how people normally do it. Mine would probably just be, you know, my daily stuff that happens and probably my, my sarcasm. Some days might be funny. Some days might be bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that the first thing I would say is if you're not opening that spiral notebook, it's probably not going to happen. So don't let the, put it away because you're also probably looking at it and going, Oh, it's another day. I didn't get my spiral notebook. So put it away. 
you're probably somebody that has tech more around you, like your phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us do. So start there. Open up. I mean, I am not kidding you. Some of my best pieces, this is true, true, true. Ask my husband, have been written in my notes on my phone. Just my notes, not even like a fancy app, just the notes. And so I would just start a note that says thoughts or feelings or call it whatever you want. And just write when you, you don't even have to write the date if you don't want to. Um, And just write down, you know, if you're like, if something comes to you, I started, I heard a friend say this to me. She said, somebody writes when they are expired by a glimmer. I think there's a whole glimmer method out there. I don't remember who it's credited to, but then I was like, yes, I stopped writing on a time schedule. And I only wrote when I had inspiration. And so I feel like that is helpful also for people that are trying to journal. Don't feel like it's this task. You know, if something reminds you, if you're at Dairy Queen, I don't know if you guys have Dairy Queen, (laughs) if you're at Dairy Queen and some kid reminds you of something that you did when you were with your dad and you remember a funny time, oh, put it down in your phone. Or if you go to the bank and some lady like me is (laughs) rude to you because she's grieving or whatever. You know, and then you mark it down. Oh my gosh, I just had a meltdown at the bank trying to close an account, you know, just anything. It just make it so simple and don't let it be this, you know, task. And also maybe journaling isn't for you. Maybe you need to do something with pictures or, you know, artwork or other things. You know, there are a million ways to really extend your father's legacy or, you know, your husband's legacy. And you can do it however you want. And so really, I would say, put that journal away. I've had friends that have bought countless journals. They will see a pretty one yeah. and they will buy it and see a pretty one. <laughs> and then they have seven and they don't do yep. anything with them. And so I say, find something else, you know? Okay. And and I think just taking that pressure off of yourself. But, you know, if if in a month you're still not using your phone and you're like, I really have some things I want to say, you know, try a Google Doc or a Word document or just anything, you know, and see what works for you. Okay. Yeah. Write a letter to someone without the intention of mailing it, but just write it. Yep. Sometimes that's a good way too. I remember writing a letter to my mom after she died. Um, and eventually I deleted it because it was just stuff. But it was stuff I needed to get out of my system. You know, yeah. it was all those things that I didn't say that I probably should have said and, and all of that stuff. But it made me feel better after just writing them down. Yes. And you can find a lot. If you mentioned earlier, you love Amazon. And, and yeah. so you can go on Amazon and there's tons of journals that are one line journals. So it might say the date and then just it literally has one line. And so Mm -hmm. if that makes it easier because you think that, oh, I can do one line, you know, even if you do five lines a week or two lines a week, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I would just say, really sit down and think about the emotion and the story you're trying to get out and ask yourself, how, how do you want to do it? Right. You know? Right. And maybe that's journaling and maybe that's not, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And for you, Stephanie, you know, the things you want to get down on paper might be more about being a mom. Mm-hmm. I mean, yep. you do have two teenage mm-hmm. boys, yeah. you know, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're the only female yeah. in an all male <laughs> household, you know, and so you have a lot of stress, mm-hmm. you know, you've got one boy on the road driving and the other That's learning you. to drive. Yeah. And, and so your, your thoughts that you put on paper might be related to that some days. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. have to be about grief. It's, Sometimes it's about anything that goes on. Mm -hmm. And if you want to write very private thoughts, make sure you protect those documents by passwords or something, Mm -hmm. just so inadvertently someone doesn't see them and have feelings Mm -hmm. hurt. But sometimes you need a place to express those innermost thoughts that you can't share with anyone else. And it's a great way to be able to do that because it does get it out of your Mm -hmm. head. And does release some of that stress. So, yep. well, unfortunately, our time is growing. That half hour went fast. <laughs> it did. It really it did, did, lady. It really did. Chelsea, you have so many bright things in your future. I just cannot wait to see where you go from here. I am going to be uh, joining your Facebook page Me so too. that I can kind of keep track so i'm not stalking you i'm just no i love it um you know i just want to be a grief sister and uh you know if we can do anything to help you move your career forward 
and help you achieve some of your visions, let us know how we can help as well. But we want to thank you so, so much. And before we wrap up, we want to offer you a few moments, just your time to speak directly to our listeners without us prompting you with questions. Just talk directly to our listeners and let them know again where they can find your words and what other services or adventures you might want to be sharing with them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just want to thank everybody for listening. And again, Kathy and Stephanie, I'm just so honored to have shared these 30 minutes with you, which went by so quickly. But I just want to say that everybody that's listening is probably, you know, in a space where they know pain and they know grief or loss or hardship. And I just want to say that I am intentionally tonight lifting you all in comfort and love and hope from afar. And I just want you to know that you are not alone, even on your darkest days when it feels that way, because it is hard. And I started this page, you know, out of despair and sorrow. And I just want to say that through meeting people like you and having other grieving hearts as a community, I have just found so much hope and light. And so I hope that you guys all keep the hope because it is there, even if you can't see it. And so again, I'm Chelsea Ola Miller. My Facebook page is Happiness, Hope, and Harsh Realities. And you can also find me on Instagram. I also have a YouTube page and my website is Happiness, Hope, and Harsh Realities, but it's actually www.hopeandharshrealities.com. And um, again, I just want to say thank you. And we're all in this together. Thanks so much, Chelsea. So listeners, we're going to leave you again for this week. I know we're in upstate New York and we're supposed to get a horrible storm tomorrow. So everybody stay warm, take care of yourselves. Remember, self-care is probably of utmost importance. And I'm going to leave you with a few more words from Chelsea that we are all forever changed by a forever absence. Take care of yourselves. We'll hear you next time as we all continue to live in grief. Thank you so much for listening with us today. Do you have a topic that you'd like us to cover or do you have a question from one of our episodes? Please email us at info at asiliveandgrieve.com and let us know. We hope you will find a moment to leave a review, send an email, and share with others. Join us next time as we continue to live and grieve together.